I got a follow-up from a conversation I had with a young lady a couple of months ago. Just got the follow-up confirmation that I was right. And what I was right about was that the man that she's dating is not over his ex. He still thinks about her. He's still in love with her. So let me kind of rewind a bit and give y'all a little bit of the backstory. So she had hit me up initially saying, why is it that my guy seems disconnected? It seems like there's this wedge. I haven't done anything wrong. I know for a fact he's not cheating, but something is missing. Something's not right. And I asked her a series of questions because in my mind, I was thinking, well, there's got to be somebody else. Either he's in love with a woman right now, some woman that he's met or something like that, or he's not over his ex. And she fought me up and down. First off, she just knew that she knew that she knew he wasn't, you know, sleeping around or he wasn't emotionally involved. He just, he just had not done that, right? Um, and I said, well, that only leaves one other option. If there's this wedge and you definitely haven't done anything wrong and he's not on the DL and nothing like that, more than likely, there's another woman in his heart. You're not, you're, you're sharing that space with him on, on an emotional level with somebody else. Y'all are having an emotional threesome, I'm telling you. She was like, no, it's been more than two years since his last relationship, and I stopped it. And I'm gonna tell her, I'm gonna tell y'all the same thing I told her. When it comes to a man, time means nothing since his last heartbreak. Time means nothing since his last wound. Because what's true for all human beings, and especially for men, is that time does not heal a dang thing. The work does. Time doesn't heal anything. The reason why I say it's especially true for men is because men are really good at being functional no matter how we feel. Some of them call it masculinity. I call it, we just not aware of our emotions. We're not very competent in terms of what we need in order to process things in a healthy way. We never have been allowed to be, you know, shut up, don't cry, uh, be a man. That kind of thing has been preached to us since we were younger. So we grow up having these wounds that basically stay in this idle state, but we're functional. We press forward or we cope. We drink, we smoke, we have sex with a lot of different women. We, we suppress, we do all of these different things, but heal. So a man could have suffered a wound 20 years ago, 40 years ago. And that won't be in the exact same place as it was whenever he first suffered it today. And so what I was trying to explain to her and it finally got through to her because she went back to her man and asked him the question like, hey, do you think you're, you're, you're fully over your ex? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as she started asking the questions I had her ask, he said, you know what? You got a point. I, I, think, I'm, I think I may still have feelings for her. So let me give y'all the breakdown on how you know whether or not your man or the man that you might want to date is still attached to his ex. Because let's throw out the whole, oh, he's fresh out of a relationship. There are some people who mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, or mentally and emotionally walk out of a relationship years before they physically walk out. That's not really the teller here. But first way that you know a man is still attached to his ex, I'll give you one sign anyway, is if nothing you do is ever good enough. Now, there's different ways you can go with this. So I won't say this is strictly that, but this is just one sign. If you're doing things for him and you just feel like, you know what, he's not critical about it, but something just seems disengaged. He seems underwhelmed. And I know what I just did for him was lit. More than likely, you just triggered for him something that his ex used to do or something that he wishes he could enjoy, but it's not from the woman he wants to enjoy it with. This ain't a fun message, by the way, in case y'all ain't noticed, but I'm gonna keep it real with you. If you catch yourself in that situation, you have to really ask the question or consider, is there somebody else on this man's mind? So that you don't waste your time, so that you don't continue being taken for granted. It's not to say he's a bad guy, but it is to say that he can have a bad impact on you if you're not protecting your heart against this, this kind of man. Another sign that he's still attached to his ex is if he argues with her. Now, You'll catch this type of thing happening with a man who's trying to co-parent with his ex. You know, oh, she won't, she don't want to give me time with my kids. Like, okay, that's one thing. But if he's arguing with her about things that are personal, the way that she talked to him, um, what questions she's asking, anything that's not really infringing upon his right, any type of real argument, argument equals investment. If he's arguing with his ex, or well, let me give you one kind of aside, like a, a, a 2B on this. If he is not only arguing, but maybe he goes on a rant about something she's done wrong, and this is something you can kind of check, ask questions. Ask questions about the things that his ex did wrong to him. If he's not arguing, right, and you wanna get an indicator, see if there's something there, ask a question about something she did to hurt him. If he goes spiraling down this path of how she did this, and how she did that, and that wasn't cool, not only is he unhealed, he's still invested. Now you're basically taking the position of that homegirl outside the relationship that's still there, that's still present in his heart, in his mind, 
then he's seeking validation and clarity. But he's speaking. If he speaks passionately, argumentatively, he just goes on a rant. He starts ruminating something like that. He gets all up in arms. Basically, that's something he's in conflict within himself. He's still, he's still going back and forth with himself about how that went. He's still looking for conflict resolution. He still cares whether or not she makes that right. And the opposite of love isn't hate. The opposite of love is apathy. It's a lot harder to come back from apathy than it is to come back from hate. So if he's just expressing, oh, she's this, she's that, she's whatever, 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 of course, you know, it's a bad sign anyway if a man is dogging his ex out. And I'm talking about even if she did him wrong, like, you know, just be wary about a man who just wants to constantly shame and throw insults and pitch you against his ex. But if he's getting really upset and emotional, that there's still an investment there. Because even a bad investment is still an investment. That kitchen got two cooks in it, so to speak, as the old folks would say. Another way that you know that he's still attached to his ex is if his mind drifts late at night. If you notice on a regular basis, he, his, his mind drifts. Like, he's not really there. You be talking to him and you just get a whole lot of, huh, what? Or, or whenever he responds, you can tell he wasn't listening to nothing that you had to say, but he's up. He's not asleep. He's not on his phone. But his mind is drifting. He's likely not over somebody. Now, could it be anxiety or something like that? Yes. Use discernment. What's going on in his life? Did he just lose his job? Did somebody die? Like, okay. Like, use discernment, right? But... If none of that stuff is at play, but you notice that he needs a little bit more distance or he's more distant with you at night, his mind kind of drifts. Here's the reason why this is an indicator he's still not over his ex. Because at night, we go back to our default. If you notice that if you're struggling at your core with depression, anxiety, overthinking, overwhelm, at night is when you're going to struggle the most, right? Because you don't have um, the same amount of energy to stay focused on something that's kind of distracting you from that. So at night, when you don't have that energy, you go back to whatever your, 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 your default is. If that man is still heartbroken over his ex, that's his default. And his default is going to hit him at night when he normally would get comfort from his ex when they would spend the night together or whatever, whatever. However, he's with you. So him trying to be present with you is not going to happen because he's still going back to whatever the relationship entailed or whatever it is that he's missing at night. And then even trying to be close to you is tough. It's kind of triggering. It brings about the grief because you're not that for him. Now, be very aware that just because you ain't that for him don't mean you ain't that for somebody else. And in fact, the reason why I'm telling you, telling you this is so that you can discern whether or not this, this type of situation is something you should continue investing in. If this is even safe for you. Because I get it. A lot of y'all looking at the, oh, well, you know, she lost her blessing or whatever. She may not have lost him completely if he's still hooked on her. One more way that you know that your man, or at least an indicator that your man may be attached to his ex, is if the sex is very functional. Meaning, it's like he's just trying to get his. Let's talk grown for a second. If he's just trying to get a nut, he's not making love. He's not engaged with you. There's very little to no eye contact. He's not mindful about his pace, about your comfort. You know, he's just getting his, just straight to the mm mm mm. And I'm talking about a majority of times. Of course, everybody likes that every now and then. But if eight out of 10 times that you guys are engaging sexually, if he's just getting straight to the point or he wants to sit back and just receive, 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 he could be selfish in the bed. He could be. He could be addicted to porn because that will do it too. But if neither of those things are really present anywhere else outside of this aspect, but you notice that he's just getting to the point as far as trying to get his, sex is functional. Sex is a distraction. Sex is a lot of times a man's distraction for a broken heart. That's why you have men who will run through a plethora of women whenever they're heartbroken because that's the distraction. That's keeping their mind off of it. They get these little many connections and many soul ties with a woman to try and pull them away from the main soul tie that they've developed, the heart, the, 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 the real investment, the love that they have for a woman because they never got closure. They never achieved closure. So if you notice that he's just having sex with you, like here's what, here's what he's doing. He's basically masturbating, but using your body as lubricant. He is. He can't, he can't make love to you because his heart is somewhere else. His heart is cold. He can't engage with you like a woman that he's really in tune with and trying to become more in tune with through the bedroom because that's supposed to be a bonding experience, right? Actually, most people would say for marriage or whatever, but I'm not here to judge. 
but it's supposed to be a bonding, connecting experience, not just functional, get to the point or what have you. If he can't do that with you, it's because his heart is somewhere else, not just his mind. And this is why it's important not just to evaluate whether or not a man is good. You'll get men with good intentions, otherwise good character, but they're in no emotional state by when at, at the time that you meet them. That's why you have to ask a man questions like, hey, in terms of your healing, what have you done to process the things that have happened to you? What work did you put in? If he can't articulate what he's done to heal, more than likely he hasn't healed. Because we've all been through stuff. But if he just says, oh, well, you know, that was back then. That was back when I was 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old. That ain't now. Oh, he has done absolutely nothing to heal. He's just coping. And you about to be another coping mechanism. In fact, you probably met him in a season of denial and pursuing you was a part of that denial. So pursuing you was a part of him saying, well, I'm good. I just need me another woman. Now that's just loneliness. That ain't me missing her. That ain't me heartbroken. That's just me. I just want me another woman. I just miss being in a relationship. I'm in a relationship type of man. Put I down in the chat if you ever heard that from a guy. And then he popped up, up on you a month or two later, which you know what, I'm still not over my ex. I'm still not over some stuff. I still got to get my head together. He was in denial. He never had the self-awareness to do the correct work on himself so that he could properly be prepared for you. And this is why it's important to not look for or be open to a good man, but to make sure you reserve yourself for an evolved man. And you have to ask the right questions. Now, I talked more in depth about the right questions to ask in order to assess if he's actually an evolved man on my masterclass, Secrets to Make an Evolved Man Crave You. If you haven't gotten access to, the yet, to that yet, click the link that you see pinned right here down in the caption. Get access now before that comes down. It's the free masterclass where I went in on how to attract evolved men and to assess whether or not he is an evolved man. The moral of the story is, if that man ain't just for you, he shouldn't be for you at all. No, a piece of a man is not better than no man at all. No man is much better than a piece of a man. And that's including his emotional capacity. But those are just my thoughts. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Get access also to the masterclass, the free masterclass, Secrets to Making Evolvement Crave You right here if you're in the market for one. Holla at y'all lady, I'll be good.